Sunday, June 4th, 2017, and school is officially in. Thank you. Oh, well, <laughs> you cut it this week. I was just getting ready to suggest cutting it. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. I am Mitch, and once again, it's on. I am joined today with my two always illustrious, always in tune co hosts, Mr. Um, Anthony the Ridiculous, maybe? Ah. Uh. What up, what up? Ridiculous? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Only sometimes. And um, and Aaron, the straight man of pretty much every conversation ever. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, what's up, y'all? The conservative. The conservative. And um, today we are kicking off um, Black Music Month, or what yeah. Obama then deemed African American Music Appreciation Month excuse you that's a mouthful um, and so today is the Black Music Month show also and, a mouthful <laughs> yeah it's all a mouthful but you know African American Music Appreciation Month originally actually started because one president, Jimmy Carter, a really cool ass white dude, from what we can understand, <laughs> declared on June 7th, 1979, that June would be Black Music Month. I tried to dig around trying to figure out some stuff, like, you know, a little Forrest Whitaker shade. You know, like maybe he did that shit amidst some sort of backlash. Couldn't find anything. Uh-huh. I'm just, you know, I'm guessing that he was just a cool ass dude. That's all. I had, yeah, I like, had the same, the same result. Trying to find something. He yeah. just like, he just like black music, man. Who doesn't? He Who was a fan um, of the Temptations. Everybody should, because if you didn't have black music, you wouldn't have any music in this country. So. No, both statements. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you really wouldn't. Kind of, sorta. So. That's that's true. Um, after that happened, though, um, apparently, as the story goes, Kenny Gamble actually kind of gave Jimmy Carter a bit of a push, you know, to to get that done. Of Gamble and, and Huff. He, of Gamble and Huff of you know Philadelphia. You guys over there, you're on um, Philly native. Right, right, right. <laughs> and he was like, oh Kenny Gamble is uh for those who don't know, he was um, one half of Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff, which they were the um pioneers of the Philadelphia sound. And they were a very integral part of um black music. So Kenny Gamble's ex-wife, Diana Williams, found out that even though Jimmy Carter declared that month, or it's the month of June, as Black Music Month, it was never actually put into law. Mm -hmm. So then she started working to get that done. And then in 2000, President Bill Clinton invited her to the White House for the celebration of the passing of the African American Music Bill. So that bill was approved in a law. So it's actually a thing. It's not just, you know, some lip service at the point. It actually did happen. Right. And back in 2009, when Barack Obama was president, He actually was the one who changed the name from Black Music Month to African American Music Appreciation Month. Thank you, Barack Obama, for all those words. (laughs) Michael Eric (laughs) Dyson-ish. Michael Eric (laughs) Dyson-ish. And 
<laughs> he also said in 2016, um, and I'm quoting him right now, um, that African American music and, and musicians have helped the country to dance, to express our faith through song, to march against injustice, and to defend our country's enduring promise of freedom and opportunity for all. Let's give Obama Mary. some. Very articulate. Very, very articulate. Very, very articulate. He speaks Love very well. He does. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks so well, don't you agree? <laughs> <laughs> the issue I have though right now is that and I think it's the issue that all three of us have and that's, that's part of what we're going to talk about um, today is why it's important to continue celebrating black music and so that question actually brings up an age-old question, or kind of two age-old questions, and, you know, one, that art should be celebrated, period, and that art enhances your life. Yeah. In, in ways that other things cannot. And number two, whether or not art actually flows in a circle where life imitates art and then art imitates life in that way. May I so also just throw a, may I yeah. also just throw a tidbit of information out there for our conspiracy theory? Uh oh. <laughs> I just stumbled across something. So June is also Pride Month. Yeah. Conspiracy yeah. theories have 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 your way with that. I'm not insinuating anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> just just throwing that out there. Just putting that out there. But um, so like, what do you guys think about that? What do you think about about the celebration of art for humanity and why that you know why it's important for us to make sure we do that. I think the celebration of art is important to maintain certain awareness and conversations about things that need to be addressed, as well as to keep a focus on the progress and the things that happened in the past as far as what you're doing today. Hmm. Uh, Yachty. Uh. <laughs> like... You need to have an understanding of what happened before you were Nobody on the Nobody understands what happened there. Nobody. We need, we, we need to have an understanding of the past before we were on the scene and the impact that it had on the culture and the things that they were trying to achieve. Otherwise, we're moving backwards. We're working backwards. Every time I see him, I'm trying to figure out, first and foremost, how he wound up with that red Kool-Aid head. And I can't, I can't get myself around anything else after that. Like, that's the well, I think, I think art. I think stop art is. A, I think art is important. Um, you know, because um, it gives us, it, it gives you know people uh, something to focus on. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, uh, away from like you know um, the daily. Um, everyday stuff that we go through um, and um, I think that's the issue with a lot of things now like people um, you know so we so caught up in like you know the day to day you know uh, money and everything it's incorporated into art heavily you know what I'm saying trying to trying to get to the money you know whether it be you know uh, music or whatever else um, unfortunately yeah yeah well, I mean, the day that, I think you were talking about this before, though, Aaron. Did you touch on this before? Like, why don't why aren't we making things and music that talks about that? Yeah, that's um, struggle, it right? doesn't sound. It doesn't sound. Yeah, we. I mean, you know, it's okay, it's okay to make well, music no, that talks about. Yeah, it's okay to make music that talks about that kind of stuff, but um, you know, it's a it's a. Free, it's a expression thing that I'm talking about. You know, like people, like we we generally don't know how to communicate with each other anymore. You know, because of the um the times we live in. It. And, right. Um, you know, um, 
art is one of those ways that we communicate with each other and if the only way you communicate with somebody is here i got a couple of dollars then that's not you know really if that's all you got to say to somebody that's not healthy at all yeah people on the outside we were we were talking um, we kind of talked about that wait, you too when you were talking about the whole me, i got more oh, i'm sorry i was gonna say you, you go ahead you you was getting to a good point <laughs> no well I, I was getting ready to ask when you said i got a couple of dollars you what you really are saying is i got way more money than you bitch right is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah that's pretty much what's going yeah. on in, in everything okay that's annoying that's that's a problem. I think people. That's not art. I don't know. I that's think. Not art. No, not at all. Self mutilation. I mean, there's a there's a there's a portion of that 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 is born out of the original, like hip hop. Because I mean, you you're you're gonna be braggadocious when you get on the mic, but it used to be a. A uh, honor to skill it. to brag about your skill. Yeah, it was like a sword fight. Right, exactly. A chess match. It was definitely yeah. like a chess match, especially if you were rumbling with certain people. Like if you were, if you were in there battling with like a Rakim, or you were battling with like a a young Trevor, aka um, Buster Rhymes. Like you couldn't just jump in there on some bullshit. I think we should just just have a trial by fire. We should just throw a little yachty in with people that could definitely eat him and then just, just <laughs> finish him off. That's almost like unfun. That's it's almost everybody. Fun. That's almost it's... everybody. <laughs> so, I mean, it's been it's been happening anyway, and you know, like I said before, that's just how the culture is designed. So it's going to happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna I think happen. It, I think it will. I think. Um. I think the. I think the tides are starting to turn because, um, like you know how we talking about last week about the long ass um book show, aka <laughs> born to use my show. Uh, when we were talking about what hip hop was born out of in the first place. They kind of made before, a point. Yeah, like I was asking you guys this before. We were talking about this before. It wasn't during the show, but, you know, we always talk all the time. And I was asking y'all, where are y'all protest songs at? Like, where is everything that is, that art is born out of? And the reason why art is created in the first place. Where is all of that? Why do, why do I not have a, a new Bring the Noise and instead what I have... Is little Yachty telling me he don't know what a wood in, a woodwind instrument is. <laughs> and so well, I'm really, I'm not, I'm, like, I mean, like I, I would I would argue that we have some of those, but I'm gonna tell you why it's not as prevalent um, right. or obvious because we don't pay attention long enough. Like you know, we in a day and time where you know people pay attention to something like like a song like Kendrick's All Right. You know what I'm saying? Which definitely is um one of those uh, protest mm-hmm. anthems. But, mm-hmm. like, how long do people focus on it? You know what I'm saying? Like, we just got done talking about uh, singles of the 50s and 60s. And, um, you know, like, those songs, like, people listen to those songs, like, you know, years at a time, you know, at one point. And, like, now, like, you know, you hear a song and it's like, all right, that's old. That was a, that was a month on ago. On to the next. Yeah. On to the next. Yeah, that's what I mean, like, 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 when I first moved here to Chicago, everybody was... Well, when I was first leaving Philly and coming here, everybody was like so into Trinidad James, and now you're like, who is who fuck is that? These kids literally don't know who fucking Trinidad James is, and that was how many years ago, you know. But I mean, you would be, well, I mean, I'd be like right on the street, people would be like, Pop Molly, I'm sweat, woo, Pop, like every two seconds yeah. they would be yelling his lyrics, and now they don't know who the fuck he is. Like bands and, and to make her dance was out, and nobody like nobody knows this shit anymore. That that window gets smaller and smaller every couple of years too. Like when we was in school, the window was like five years. Like I can say I'm yep. listening to something that's five years old, and they're like, "Oh, that's old," or whatever. Like three years old was fairly recent. Nowadays, three years old is being played on the old school station in Philly. The, the old school, <laughs> like that's that that ridiculous. That's, nonsense. What the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, three like years is not three to five years. I know fucking old school. <laughs> <laughs> that's old three years, three years, years of throwback now. Uh, the it's throwback that's Thursday. No, that dumbest shit ain't a throwback. 
I'll Go give you two thousand. I will give you two thousand because that's seventeen years ago now. I will allow you to have like you know thrown on Cisco's thong song and call that shit. <laughs> <laughs> or fucking fill it on your booty or something. That shit is 17 years old now. I will let you have that. Or like ignition. Like shit like that. That shit is old now. But three years ago? That's almost, well, that's almost a high school graduate. 17 <laughs> years ago. Or right now, for some people, it is a high school graduate. Yeah. So I'll let you have that. That's somebody's whole lifetime at this point. But not three years ago. No, not three Somebody years ago. Somebody who was just born three years ago just learned how to how to like walk upright and run really good and eat solid food. That's not a long time. You're right. <laughs> still can't still can't control their bladder. Exactly. They still like um talk about a big kid now with their pull ups on. This is that's not a long time ago. That's I I don't know. I don't understand that. I guess I don't because I come from a, a different time. But things I think are swinging back because. And we were talking about that 50s and 60s time period when the singles and stuff mainly like the very early 60s. By the time the late 60s came along, or like, like the mid 60s, you have to realize the culture and the climate of this country and the world started to change. And unfortunately, yeah. I think that that's what's going to happen. I think all this shitty crap we're listening to is going to give way because we're going to be in some struggling ass times that are going to require some music that is way more substantial mm. than yeah. play with that pussy like peekaboo play with that <laughs> pussy like peekaboo <laughs> I, I blame technology too though the advent of technology like music is so available that like you don't have to just enjoy or soak in a single at a time like when you go out to the record store, you buy a record, like you get that single and that's it until you go buy the next record. Yeah, that's true. Everything is just a click away these days. We've talked about that before too, like how- Yeah, cause even back, even today, like when we used to buy CDs and stuff, like, you know, you ran with that joint for a while, the CDs, first CDs ain't cheap. <laughs> then, you know, you rode around with that joint for a so, you know, uh, yeah, you can get up on, you know, whoever your other favorite artist was. Mm -hmm. I blame Napster. I blame Napster. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> Napster, I mean, they were the first ones to get out there doing that shit, too. Napster and LimeWire. Yep, I used to be on LimeWire all, LimeWire all the fucking time. Yeah. But however, I want to preface that so I'm I'm a freaking lover of music. I was not downloading songs that were available for purchase. <laughs> I was only downloading shit that was discontinued and or out of print. So there. There. I never actually used LimeWire or Napster, but I attribute what they did to the downfall of. The album era and the music industry um, attributes the music it industry to their the loss of fun too. Oh, they don't like that shit. <laughs> they don't like that shit. Nah, I mean, can you? They taking money right out their pockets. Yeah, they are. But but man, that's why. Is, but that's also why the quality of music is going down because they don't invest money in this shit anymore. They 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 yank these MFers right off of YouTube because they want the right. person that's already got the following built up on their own that they don't got to invest no shit into. Right, right. And at, like the, same, at, the, same time, at the same time, these young kids do, that's falling for that don't know the ins and outs of the industry. They don't know what no, they, they find them. They find it. So they, that's why they have no real longevity. Yep. And they fall into irrelevance quite quickly. But all of that, all of that, like, all of this stuff, like, tie into each other, though. Like, it's not even just music. It's, like, TV and everything, too. Like, um, you know, I sit there, and I'm still, like, I'm still kind of, like, mind blown watching <laughs> Netflix and Hulu and all this stuff with my kids. Because it's, like, they don't even know. Like, we had to wait for our struggle. favorite cartoons to come struggle. on. We had to wait for <laughs> our favorite struggle. Like, they don't, they don't understand. You gotta get up and get something. Like, you got everything. Everything is right there at your disposal, and it's like it's not. Bro. You don't appreciate it. I feel Bro. like you know yeah. you don't appreciate yeah. it the same way. Air, 
Yo, Aaron, I know you can relate to having to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to catch the new episodes of Yu Yu Hockey Show. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Kids ain't got to worry about that these days. Yeah. That. You know what? And see, you guys are from a different era than I am. Y'all don't remember having to <laughs> wait till Saturday to fucking watch your cartoons. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. We did like know. we did have a few cartoons that came on every what, once in a while, like you know. Saturday morning cartoons. Saturday morning, cartoons. Saturday morning, morning cartoons. yeah. They don't know a damn thing about that shit. We woke up in the morning to watch Super Friends. I was up at the what, crack of dawn <laughs> trying to watch <laughs> Super Friends and Laugh Olympics and all of my shit that came on that I wanted to see. And I, I am old enough to remember when TD did not just play all night and day. That shit signed off. It cut at off at the a certain time. <laughs> and them colorful bars kept on was like. <laughs> 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 I used to hate that shit. I used to hate that. Oh, man. Yeah, everything yeah, we is, had to wait. is we had to now. Wait. Everything is now. Yeah, everything yeah, is now, 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 now. Wait for everything, you know what I'm saying? I had to, we had to wait to watch, wait to watch your kung fu movie, kung fu movies and shit, like all types nope. of stuff. Like you had to, and, wait and like I was, all the movies, all the movies I love, like I would always catch either 20 minutes into it or like going off. I would never see the whole movie. Right, you ain't got to worry about that now. You DVR, you rewind that shit. You know what I mean, see, we didn't even have <laughs> look. We didn't have VCRs when I was a young kid. You watch that shit when it came the fuck on. That shit was an event. Yeah, if you missed it, you missed it. If you missed it, you they might have rerun it. Like, like you might have, and you fucking looked in a TV guide that was made of paper, and you turned the pages. <laughs> made of paper. <laughs> yeah, made of trees. That shit was a book, and you subscribed to it. They they fucking mailed it to you. Yeah, I'm from the TV guide channel era. Yeah, yeah we, no. we had no yeah, we TV guide channel. You yeah, remember the TV guide, the VCRs, you know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, don't, don't, don't let remember, you remember going to the Remember going to the video <laughs> store on the weekend? Blockbuster? <laughs> Look, they don't know no damn Blockbuster video is. In, 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 Philly, we had, uh, in Philly, we had West Coast Video. <laughs> West Coast oh, wait, Video. West Coast Video. Wait, remember, remember watching the TV Guide channel, trying to see what comes on, what channel, but turning away for a second and missing that channel, and having to yep. watch the whole rotation <laughs> over and again. all over again. Yep, basically. Yeah. There was no oh, guide. Yeah. Like you said, there was no guide button on there. Like, at, at, yeah, like when yeah. cable first started, you ain't had no damn guide button. That shit was still in. Like you guys had a TV Guide channel. When Cable first came on the scene, that shit was still in a fucking paper cable guide. You turned you the pages, the you, you got the book, that. and you Rest looked at... Rest in peace to all the trees. Rest in peace to all the trees. Rest in peace to all the trees that got killed with that shit. <laughs> For our viewing pleasure. But you know yo, what, some, though? I'm the, telling you right now, yo, some young boy gonna listen to this and be like, yo, entertainment was a job back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> but but Aaron, you can leave it all to some young boy in the office with a computer these days. But that's part <laughs> of what made it more substantial and made you appreciate it more, and that's the reason why the art was better. Yeah, the art is, exactly. is suffering at this point because it's too easy to get, it's too readily available, it's too easy to be cookie cutter, and it's too it's too much about. I need to produce quickly so I can sell quickly so I can sell out quickly. It's not. Uh huh. Yeah. You Every know. little schmo wasn't getting on. Nope. There were definitely a whole lot more um, watchdogs and a whole lot more gatekeepers. So you didn't have a whole whole lot of whack shit out there. I mean, you might have some stuff that would that would come through. That happens every generation where some whack shit comes through. But even me and like we were talking about this too this week too. Even shit that was just entertaining fluff was better. <laughs> like money cash whole songs. Like Aaron said, money cash whole songs had standards. Like <laughs> <laughs> it did. It did. It did. Even that shit yeah. was better. Like And they were all you, you could hear you could hear what they were saying. Look, I told y'all somebody well. Somebody told me that they like Big Sean because he can, because they can understand what he's saying. That 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 should not be a bar for anything. That's frightening. 
Oh, it's very frightening. It's, 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 it's terrifying. It should be a whole yeah, lot but, deeper than me being able to understand what you're saying. Yeah, but that's why it's, that's why it's hard to appreciate art nowadays because it's, it's, it's right there in front of your face and you don't even know, like nowadays, people don't even know what they get in. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just... It's just there, and you know it is what it is. They don't even know. I don't even know whether to call hip shit art now. Like, <laughs> no, it's so. not. You you can't really call it. Well, the people are always hung up on the subjective part of art. There's a technical part of art as well, and there there are certain rules that you and certain components that you have to hit. Like we talk about hip hop. Like there are certain things that you that have to be present for you to call a thing a thing. And if you don't hit those notes, the thing is no longer a thing. You need to put it out there in some other place. Like everybody keeps saying, stop calling this mumble shit rap because it's not. It's something yeah. else. Like if yeah. you're future and you can't sing, <laughs> but you also can't rap. So you're auto-tuning your singing and you're auto-tuning your rapping voice. Well, who the fuck are you? What are you doing? It's like it's like modern day scat or bebop. No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> How we both said. Eh, it's eh. like it's like a highly intoxicated little Richard. No, even little Richard had talent. Highly intoxicated. He could play that sh- the shit out that damn piano. <laughs> take away the piano, just give him a microphone. Don't, but you it's can't drugs. take away the piano. That motherfucker had talent. <laughs> Take away the piano and sprinkle some crack on him. No, he oh had goodness. fucking talent. He had talent. Like, everybody laughs about people. Like, like Saber Flay plays 11 and 12 different fucking instruments. Not on the songs that you like. But I'm saying he understands what he's doing. He knows this shit. He, he understands melodies and harmonies and how many... Like, does Lil Yachty know that he's supposed to... Do a hot 16. Does he know what a hot 16 is? I don't think a hot 16 is relevant to Lil Yachty. But, I mean, does he understand how many bars that there are? Like, does especially, he understand any of those things? Especially bars, when you repeat, when you bars, repeat one of those bars for eight bars of a 16. <laughs> I don't think a hot 16 is relevant. First of all, first of all, you're talking, you're talking about, it, like, these dudes now... They don't why why they gotta count bars when they start the song off with sound effects and and, and true. I guess I guess you call it a hook. I don't know what the hell that shit is. It's a bridge, it's a bridge. <laughs> but the bridge is not the first part of the fucking song. <laughs> the rules of fame. The, rules of the fame. bridge is to get you from one side of the song to the other one. What are you talking about? It's in the, the fucking thing, middle. The whole thing is a bridge. The whole song can't be a bridge. <laughs> the whole thing is a bridge. Well, the bridge is over, and that's what I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> that went over some people's heads. Yeah, well. Not the, not the ones that know. Go throw some DDP. Go throw on some, some Boogie Down Productions. We'll always get paid. We'll take the <laughs> wackest song. <laughs> Little Yachty. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, the, the internet is a big component in killing a lot of it yeah that's yeah that's true well that's first period everybody um for right now and um Ant's gonna maybe Ant's not going to I think Aaron might be I think Aaron might be doing um out to lunch today right passing the baton passing the baton passing the baton yeah yeah Yeah, passing it over yeah (laughs) Get on the mic and MC. Um, hey, Aaron. Well, you know, since we talking about these, you know, these weird old whack rappers, we got to put them on the forefront. They are culture vultures. Like, you know, whether they know it or not, you know what I'm saying? And that's basically what Out to Lunch, um, that's basically what Out to Lunch going to be about today, um, culture vultures. But, you know, um, a lot of, a lot of people like throw the word culture vulture around and you know um they don't really know what it's about and um i think it i think it started well it's, it's been going on for years it's been going on forever yeah. actually yeah. but um really 
Yeah. Hmm. I wonder who started it. Could it be <laughs> Puffy? Uh-huh. No, nah, uh-huh. I mean, it goes a little bit before Puffy. Like Luthor. Wait, but yeah, oh my um, God. Mind blown. We've been, Puffy, we've been, we've been dealing with it? culture vultures um, <laughs> as far as music goes, as far as black um, music goes. We've been dealing with it for um, a long time, you know, since oh, the generation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even be a lot of people like to pinpoint Elvis, you know. Shout out to Public Enemy. Um, but Elvis <laughs> was a hero to most, but he never meant shit to me. Right. Motherfucker <laughs> was <laughs> racist. But yeah, it's been it's been going on um before that. And um what I wanna talk about today is the fact that we're doing it to ourselves, like, you know, basically yeah. like, you know. Yeah. You know, changing the rules on everything and, and turn it into whatever it is we listening to now. I think that harks back to like when we were talking about art and the reason why art exists. The reason why people are creating art these days is not out of a need or a form of expression, but more so to get that check and the spotlight. Yeah. yeah. And they're using exploitation to do it. But we were also talking too, like, because Aaron have found, cause we, we watch, we watch a lot of YouTube and, you know, things that are out in the culture. And we watch, uh, one of our favorite things to watch is Rap Critic, his right. um, <laughs> show on YouTube, his, his YouTube channel. And because he's, he's kind of along the lines a lot of times of the kind of things that we think and say. Along the lines. I disagree with him sometimes. I do too, sometimes. But, um, he he was talking about about um specifically what like 21 savage and and oh my god what's the other one not Lil yada the other one oh Lil uzi vert where um we're talking about this this, this promotion of the the depression of these these millennials right now like some of it is an expression, but it's an expression of like they're just in this mass state of Hypnosis. depression. <laughs> uh, they're just Hypnosis depression. Like Hypnosis. all their friends are dead, apparently, and yeah, you know that's, that's <laughs> they, just, they don't care about killing, dying, or being high. Like apparently, they like, just want to be numb to everything. Like I was, I remember when Nova came. When Frank Ocean's Novocaine came out, I was like, this shit is the anthem to, to their generation. And people kept saying, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, okay. I said, just that wait. That shit is sad. That shit is sad and depressing. Yeah. Yep. I like Novocaine, by the way. <laughs> oh, I love man. that song. But see, that's a, a, an example of that shit done correctly. Yeah, right. I agree. Like he's talking about it, so, you know. He's saying this shit is depressing. Is you know, he was like, we want to live our lives numb, but that shit, it was done on a level that you can take it and con- you know, you can contemplate over, you can talk about it, you can politicize it, you can. I can't politicize. Play with this pussy like peekaboo. Play with the pussy like peekaboo. Play with the pussy like peekaboo. I can't even. I can't even. I can't barely talk too much shit about 21 Savage either like <laughs> some of his lines say some things about you know his upbringing and how he was around violence and, but you can't really he's he, I don't even know how to begin to to talk about it because everything he says he just says it in a way and how he delivers it and how it's just vibrating on such a fucking low level he said right. genuinely dumbfounded the worst, the worst part about it is that I, like, I don't even think I don't even think they dig like they understand what they're doing like um you know they don't they don't get it like I said like they're culture vultures you know what I'm saying and they don't understand what they're doing you know they don't get like we were saying they're pimping the hip hop audience whether you want to include them in the conversation or not yeah you know but At they don't at this point in time they don't understand that they're doing it. At this point in time, that's the norm. They the generation after the generation that made the conscious decision to do that. Uh, that's unfortunately true. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, like I always bring up, we definitely there were a bunch of us who tried to fight that shit, but you know, when left when let comes along, you know, when the others start coming along, and you know. <laughs> sell out, the, well, sell out mean, the keys to the kingdom legal, and say, here you go, we rather make money. Legal tender as a blindfold is quite effective. Mm. You know? <clears throat> Depends on I, who you try that shit with. I feel like... I feel like these people do know that they're being culture vultures. Like, remember those statements that Vince Staples made that time we were watching that interview? Vince Staples, I think, is the exception. Yeah, I think he wanted a few like that I was putting the exception to. He but he said he, but he basically said he knew, but he didn't give a fuck. Yeah, but that's what I mean. I mean, I, I'm saying he's the exception as far as like being conscious of it, being like, aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, so then both things are a fucking problem. The ones that know and are still doing it are a problem. Like, back in the day, see Dolores Tucker and the like, you know, raged against us. And, you know, we're always like, you children. And put, putting, their, putting their little finger up, their index finger up. You children and your horrible music. You're going to ruin yourself. <laughs> um, and rest in peace, you know, see Dolores Tucker. I ain't got nothing against that woman. But, <laughs> like that. We were still fairly in control of our art at the time. Right. Fairly. And a lot of the things that we were saying and doing at the time, they weren't being done in this way. Like I think, Aaron, you were saying before, it was more about this is my reality. This is what I live every day. Um, But things got to get better than this. I got to do better than this. I want something more than this. Like that was more of the sentiment. Right. Um I was uh, um I was going to talk about that too because that's uh I think that's a product of not knowing the difference between what's real and what's not. Well, everything like, is romanticized. Exactly. Now, that's yeah, what definitely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, we don't know. Like, what's like we were just saying. Like, it's everything is easily accessible. Movies, um, TV shows, uh, you know, whatever music. Yeah. And it's like because of because of that, and like you know, it's no filter anymore. Um, we don't we don't have that line to know the difference of what's being what we digesting like what's real what's not like we were saying like you said about uh Nas and um you know when he make the line about cracking your cabbage you know that kind of thing it's like <laughs> it's like it's like okay yeah he threw that in there but in the middle of that verse he's talking about some real live stuff too you know what I'm saying true well Nas true. has a tendency to do that because he's a he's he's the street poet he is he is the the street griot, and we know that about him, and that's fine. He kind of established on that, on Illmatic, that that's what he was going to be, because that Early was the on. only song he had that, where he did yeah, that. But, yeah, but the point I'm trying to make is that most most rappers did stuff like that back in the day, they or, did. you know what I'm saying, it's still it's still artists that do stuff like that now. That's what was expected that. of rappers. Exactly. And, and like, in, mu- in music in general, though, like, you don't, you know what I'm saying, like, you don't expect um, you know, certain people to just behave the way they talk about behaving on a song just because they talk about it all the time. You know what I'm saying? But that's but what now, 21 Savage said that y'all motherfuckers are weak, and I'm actually gonna <laughs> rap what I fucking live. I'm gonna live what I rap too, and I'm going to jail every two seconds. When <laughs> keeping it real goes body wrong. murder, like all these, <laughs> you know, right? Petty right. Wives. So now, yeah, and then when you implement stuff like that, when you got people actually, you know what I'm saying, rapping about going in and out of jail or, you know, killing somebody, and then next thing you know, next thing you know, is you see them actually going through it, it's like, oh, well, you know, that's the standard. The standard is, you know, everything, you know, everything is real. No matter what's being said, it's got to be real because, you know what I'm saying, if it's a meme, it got to be real, that kind of thing. Like, that's, yeah. you know, that's what we coming up in now, you know what I'm saying, where, you know, the kids um can't tell the difference or even some adults can't tell the difference of what That's true. You know, but we become desensitized like we don't even know how many you know, we don't know the difference between having real friends and Facebook friends. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, it's becoming an ongoing thing for me, but I'm going to continue to blame social media for a lot of the problems that we're talking about. Whether it relates to music or not, like the accessibility to other people's random thoughts and not realizing yep. that they they fighting the same desire to fit in or whatever is like this is dangerous for sheep or they have the same like demons um demons as you well to me that shit just becomes amplified if you already understand psychology and how how human beings work and how things in this universe work you will understand that but it takes understanding that and when you have somebody preying on especially the very youngest members the, the most impressionable ones they don't understand that like I'm old enough to know that I'm listening to Peter talk about perks and mollies all day long and then he talks about how he doesn't even take drugs so I know <laughs> the fucking exactly. he, is cult- he is a culture vulture and he's using this shit to pander and sell these fucking records to the most impressionable set possible but they're going to not only buy this shit they're going to do it even though he's and that's, not. that's just as bad as you know back in the 90s we'll watch a movie about the street and the struggle or whatever and niggas on the corner hustling and they always had rules about hustling like they would never sell crack to like a pregnant woman or whatever and right. then in a certain time frame, those movies change where you get a nigga like 50 and get Richard Die trying, he'll sell crack to the pregnant woman or whatever. Well, it's kind of like the, the wire. Like, like, like you got the, like the Avon Barksdale's of the world. Like, the, you know, the Barksdale's had very strict, you know, rules about what they did. And then all of a sudden, right. Marlo comes up. Marlo's like, fuck this shit. I, I'm, it's a wild fucking west. The only thing Marlo got out of bent out of shape about was his name. Like he was willing to make irrational decisions based around the reputation of his name. And that was it. Everything else he didn't give a shit about. He like they got the dumbed up. down. <laughs> they got the filtered down, the filtered down version of the rules. Yep. <laughs> you right. get the condensed version of the rules. You don't understand the principles behind them. Well, there is no principle. That's the that's the problem. The principle. There was. Been- there was. There was. There some- were. And and that's my point about hip hop. There were certain things that we would and would not do, even when we were t- like Biggie. Even though Biggie's lyrics were violent, they were he was always talking. Biggie was like the dude that could tell you eight million ways he was gonna kill you and then describe your funeral. Yeah, that's what he did all the time. But it was the way in which he did it because it was clever. He wasn't. He wasn't vibrating on a lower level. Art has to also do with what kind of um, drive you have, where your mindset is coming from, but it also has to do with what you put into your craft. Right. How serious but, are you about your craft? Yeah, and that's that's what's not happening anymore. Like people aren't, you know, people aren't serious about the craft because, like I said, everything is easily accessible, and the perception is that. Anybody can do it. Like if you want Instagram right now, everybody but is a photographer. But they keep saying that everybody can't do it. But I don't, I don't understand how. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's a perception. It's a perception that everybody can do it. You want Instagram? Everybody is a photographer. Everybody is a model. Everybody <laughs> and and that's why that's why we everybody had a place now for where real and they gonna show up to prom right. with with three dates and a camel. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and um. And that's where we at now with the art because, you know, the pe- people that's doing it don't understand that you take away the value when it's when everything is easily accessible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. value of it is like, you know, well, you know. And they look at it, they look at it like Biggie talked about this and Biggie achieved this level of success. So I can talk about the same thing, whether or not I have any experience in that. Right, <laughs> but, the same level but it's of not success. even the experience. You're not, you're not, you're not working at the same level um, of skill. That's what the big problem is. Uh-huh. I don't have to. Yeah. I'll like, take it these make MCs, it. nah, these MCs worked. They worked. They honed their craft. They I got in and battle work. with people. They they I got in battle with folks. I ain't got to do the same work. Thanks to Napster and LimeWire and SoundCloud and shit like that. And they wrote their freaking the rhymes. Work. Like, I always get upset about this whole, you know, like, millennials are really fascinated by never writing your rhymes down. I 
I hate that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Chops to add to, he said you wrote that in five minutes, no shit, it sound like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's how I just wrote it for a minute. Chops and then fucking to. sat around twiddling your thumbs for the last minute and scratched your ass <laughs> and then opened your Damn. mouth and gave me the wackiest shit ever. <laughs> like, uh-uh. Like, yeah, when, no I, concept. when I first heard Nas, Kick that rhyme, and the world is yours about writing words past the margin. Uh huh. Uh huh. That shit hit me so hard in the chest. It's poetic. Cause I was, a, I'm a writer. It's like poetic. you can feel it's that poetic. shit. That shit, but that shit, but that's what we fucking do. That's what MCs do. And I think, I think, I think like Jay Z is a big part to blame for that because yeah, Jay Z writes rhymes without actually writing his rhymes, but I feel like Jay-Z rewrites his shit without writing his rhymes, too. He does. And that's the part that was missed and that was skipped in that interview when he said he don't write shit down. <laughs> that was, he didn't say he didn't rewrite the shit. He said he didn't write it down. Yeah, he that's, also that's all they, the that's all they thing, take from it. You know, but at the same time, everybody doesn't have a photographic memory. Just because they do doesn't mean right. you got one. Right. Right, photographic memory is not a requirement of being an MC. One it's of the not. MCs, that's a, that's one of the other MCs of all it. time, Rakim Allah, wrote his rhymes in he graffiti did. style. I was just gonna style. go there. Do that shit, Rakim. Do it. <laughs> but wrote that's a that's a case of us uh, the um that conversation being taken out of context because when people right. hear that you know oh I don't write it down they just hear oh you didn't write it down they don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Because I've done it before. Like, you know, you can sit there and, like, you know, manifest a rhyme in your head. You know what I'm saying? For, like, a, a day or two or whatever. You know what I'm saying? However right. long it takes. Right. And yeah. then, you know, and just come with it. You know, but uh-huh. a lot of people, they hear that and they just like, oh, he just went in there and said whatever the hell. You know? No. <laughs> right. No. I'm, I'm immediately no. forced to think. I'm immediately forced to think of most deaths verse from hip hop on black is black on both sides. Black I on knew both you were sides. About to bring this yeah. Up. Yep. Sometimes write a rhyme for days, scrutinize days. my literature yes. from the large to the miniature. Yep. Mathematically add minister. Subtract the yes. word selector. Will it back? I'm feeling that. Uh. <laughs> but that. But that's how you fucking rise to greatness. I. I'm a writer. Sometimes I store shit in my head, like lines in my head for uh-huh. years before and that shit manifests itself. Them. But then I sit and I work on them. And that's the difference. I write between, that shit down. That's the difference between the real and the posers, the vultures, the yep. popcorn generation. These yeah, fucking but it's also vultures, it's, man. it's also the value, the value and the um quality put into stuff. Like I said, you know, if if everybody can do it, then what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything, it means you know? nothing. It means shit, and exactly. that's what like, you know. I don't want everybody to think that we didn't make mistakes and we didn't have issues. Like I was saying to them before, I'm all into little Yanni's ass every two seconds about that cello comment. I. <laughs> <laughs> We did shit too. We made mistakes, you know. Run the yeah, There's three yeah, of us, so we're not the Beatles. You know, nice and smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Said Dizzy Gillespie plays the sax, and we all know Dizzy Gillespie played the trumpet. However, Nelly is a sucker for corals and manicured toes. <laughs> but I, I mean, I at the same time, at that time, John. <laughs> John was dead and there were three Beatles. So, how about that? How about that? And there are girls with monkey feet who got monkey <laughs> <can't>. So <laughs> Manicure toes could pass. <laughs> and, and not only that, but Dizzy Gillespie actually did play the sax. He just wasn't known for it. But he did nah, play the sax. He played the sax from time to time. He pl- no, he was proficient in playing the saxophone. He just it wasn't, wasn't his well known choice. for it. It wasn't his weapon of choice. The, yeah, it was his weapon of choice was the trumpet. But you could still say Dizzy played the sax and it should be, be accurate because he did play the sax. <laughs> so even our mistakes were right. Fuck you, Lil Yachty. <laughs> play with that pussy like pickable. Oof. 
I just I can't I just I can't. Y'all. That video can't. is hilarious. That video is hilarious. I mean, he he. he, he said, people, I mean, like I mean, like uh, it, like you know, like 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 peekaboo. He was just like it's all gentle. It's all gentle. He's like like peekaboo. Like, I wish y'all could see my finger movements <laughs> as I say that. No, that crazy man. The fucking crazy man. Said that shit. That's it, be rude. Like, you have to explain that. I feel like Lauren Jamar when I'm watching this shit. Like, and I feel like Lauren Jamar be harsh. For all those who don't know and who don't watch Vlad, Culture Vulture. That nigga's TV. a troll. Vlad's a troll. Oh. He said because, it, but he's well known for interviewing Lord Jamar and Lord Jamar be laying that <laughs> shit down the fucking line all the time. <laughs> Lord Jamar need to check for that shit. Well, now it's Lord Jamar needs his own fucking segment. He needs his own <laughs> show. Fuck Vlad. Get Lord talking Jamar. Shit with Lord Jamar. <laughs> talking shit with Lord Jamar. Lord Jamar is not a culture vulture, though. He loves True. the culture. He's going to lay that shit down the line, like for real, for real. Quite flat. Quite flat. Him and the um and Rap. Yeah. <laughs> I like when, my game um, Quite flat. When, um,. When Vlad had Cool G Rap on, like I showed y'all that, Cool G Rap was just, he was straight up. He was like, he said, it's dope to be a lyricist. Yeah. He's like, it's to dope as hell. He's like, he's he like, this shit, he's like, when you are entertained by something this <clears throat> low level, it shows your level or lack thereof of intellect. He's like mm-hmm. only he's like only a little preschooler would actually be entertained by Peekaboo, and then Vlad revealed to him that little Yachty had a song named Peekaboo. <laughs> he didn't right. even know the song was called Peekaboo before Vlad said that shit. Play with that puzzle, that Peekaboo. Play that puzzle, that Peekaboo. He was like, "What? Play with that puzzle, that Peekaboo." Get the fuck out of here. That yeah. I'm sure his mind. He was like, "This shit can't exist." It actually exists. <laughs> but see, that's the that's the thing about it. Like, it's not like it's not like songs like this didn't exist before. Like, you know, we had like we had like these you know songs that were never taken seriously that existed before. But nah. now, this type of music is the standard. It's the, nah, it's the standard it's everywhere. everywhere. It's it's everything, standard. right? It's all we're getting. Yeah. Like we had songs before, like you would listen to like, you know, Shaggy, it wasn't me. Baja Men, who let the but dogs that, out. But that the means, Macarena. We talked about that shit before, Aaron. Me and um me and Aunt was saying this. That shit was never ever considered being part of our culture. That shit sat on the outside. We didn't claim that. Exactly. That was that's what was exactly. translated to the Kids Box album. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You but didn't that's what I'm claim no about. Quiet City DJs and no fucking Daisy Duke songs, <laughs> right? But that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Like people were able to uh to separate because they you were know, able the to internet, differentiate. Yeah, the internet, yeah, the internet wasn't in full effect, so people were able to separate what was real and what wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, Vlad what was, actually did that. Vlad was like, "Oh, we have songs." I was like, "You don't fucking claim that shit for the culture, you idiot." That proves the fucking that. culture. Vlad's good for that. Vlad's good for that. No shit about look. It takes two. I'll let you have that shit. Yes, the culture claims it takes two. <laughs> that shit hot. <laughs> that shit was a party. And his other song, um, Joy and Pain. We claimed Rob Bass and DJ Uzi Rock. I ain't gonna lie about that shit. I that decided. Shit was a I decided. Dick. I decided. Vlad don't know what the fuck he's talking about when he said. He um, that when he, said he, uh, when he said he didn't know that he don't consider um black thought uh, uh, a rapper. Uh, the biggest uh, thing about Vlad is he knows exactly what he's doing. And, and all our listeners that we have so far, we're going to be doing a whole another show on culture vultures because that shit is too deep not to have a whole show in on into itself. Yeah, we kind of got to cut this short to get on with the topic. Yeah, so that's out to lunch, ladies and gentlemen. That was just um, one, damn. <laughs> cause that's it. Cause this topic is deep. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you know, shit. Like music, and like Aaron was saying before, it's not just hip hop that this has affected. 
all music at this point has devolved down to its lowest common denominator. Like it's not just, but it's but it's hip hop's fault. Yeah. Hip hop touched everything, and everything is just wilted. Yep. Is it hip hop's fault or is it the record? No, it's, it's hip hop's fault. Really? Because I feel like there's some good intention hip hop out there. And there's always been some good intention hip hop. But then it fell into the wrong hands. And like experimentation turns into exploitation in the wrong hands. Yeah. Let me tell you why I say, let me tell you why I say it's hip hop's fault. Because before, before hip hop came, like, yes. Record record executives and people like that, they want it hit. They want it hit, you know, just like they do now. But when hip hop came, like it infiltrated every other genre. Like hip hop, like we talked about this before, like hip hop it infiltrate R and B. It infiltrate rock music. I hear country singers incorporating rap lines in their songs now. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Shout out, shout out, uh, shout out, uh, what's his name? Luke Bryan for that joint. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, what the fuck is that song? Damn, I'm going to Google it and look, let you know. <laughs> I'm guessing the song is not called I'm going to Google it and let you know. It's actually a title. I'm going to Google it and let you know. That's not that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's called, right. uh, it's called Drunk on You. Everything. Drunk on You. Yeah, Google oh, that I heard that. That's your hip hop. That's your hip hop. He's talking about his speakers going boom, boom. That ain't no country metaphor. <laughs> exactly, right. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no country metaphor. Hey, wait oh, a minute. Man. That sounds like um Latrim. Like, throwback hip hop. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, we like the cars. The cars that go boom. He took it back a little bit. He took that shit. Like, <laughs> he took that shit back to LA based. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, this shit is no, that's true. Yeah, like hip hop like, touched but, everything. And it's just, like, but hip hop was born. Hip hop was born from that same sentiment. It it was, but it was his own thing. It it wasn't it wasn't like yeah. you know uh, a melting pot for this bullshit. It's just like the best so that, analogy I could I could give you right now is like you know let's say you like bacon, you know what I'm saying? But just because you like bacon. bacon don't mean you eat it with every damn thing. But people eat I would bacon if I on could. everything. I would if I could. Bacon on everything, man. Bacon on donuts. <laughs> bacon and pie. I if I Somebody bake the pie one day. A pecan pie that have bacon incorporated into it. That's, yeah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> I, I would if I, I would if I could like a motherfucker. You <laughs> like, do not understand at this point how not to be extreme. They have to be extreme right now. They don't understand the importance of being moderate and moderating themselves. You can't just yeah. put bacon on your bacon. Right. It's like you know what I'm saying. You might have a <laughs> bacon decent. wrap. Bacon is the future. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap some no, pork bacon with some beef bacon and dip it in cheese. That shit is the future of heart attack. Remember that fucking KFC sandwich that was made out of two pieces of chicken and yeah. bacon and cheese in the middle? Yeah. Fucking yeah, heart man. attack sandwich. It's death. That was death yeah. on the Hip-hop is causing everything. Hip hop is causing everything to go into cardiac arrest because it is what trying I, to put like said, on every fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, but, but like, but like I said, hip hop, hip hop itself was born from that same sentiment, that same pulling from everything and adding to what was already but there. It, but it, but it's hip-hop. different. It, it, it did decide what it was pulling from. Okay, and to uh, that end, I'm right. going to but say to the little why? idiots, you know that that keep talking about how. You know the boom bap is boring, and how they can't. Uh, that shit was born out of something that actually had form and structure. I will. Okay? I will admit. I will admit. I had a moment where I said that when I first listened to uh, the Gangstar album. Um, it's on Which the tip one? of my tongue. It's on the tip. Harder. No, Harder. the real one. The red cover. The red cover. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hard, is it hard to earn? Is it hard to earn? Yeah, think, long on, way to go, a long way to I go turned me off. off when I first listened to it. Because it was boring and it was so boom bat. What? It eventually grew 
for me, and I love that album. I love it. Well, you just I would, better. I, I would, I would, I would uh, <laughs> fornicate with it if I could. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> if I could. If, like hard to earn had, if, if hard to earn had a vagina, I would I would fornicate. I can't do this. I'm forced. I'm forced occurring that. Yeah, but that's what we that's what we dealing with. We dealing with that's not the same thing when you talk about hip hop. Like hip hop is not. It's, but it it's safe to say it's safe to say this the clown was inevitable because hip hop was born from that same cut and paste style. Yeah, see, but that goes back but to the conversation not, we just had like about. But not like that, Anthony, and that's yeah, what we that keep just, saying. It's not yeah, like that. It's taking, not it's like taking out that. Of con- it's taking out of context. They go back to the argument we just had about Jay Z and Biggie not writing their rhymes. You know what I'm saying? Right, just because, right. just because you yeah, heard or they didn't write their rhymes doesn't mean you go into it and do whatever the hell you want. But that's typical of people. That's what makes it inevitable. But like no, everybody's not going to get. Everybody's not going to get the intricacies that, that go shit. into it. That, everybody's well, you not going to get the intricacies that go into it. But most people during the age of boom bap fucking did. They did get it. But at the same they time, at the same time, hip hop was kicking down doors of people who didn't get it. But and here's my issue, and and let me frame it like this. Number one. Hip hop died a death. It died a previous death back in the day during the old school period. Okay? For everybody who doesn't know that, the old school period burned off. And because what what happened was the other components were burning more brightly at that at that point. The MC was kinda like you know, in the back like we were we were B boying. And and tagging every fucking thing and DJing more than we were MCing at the time. I'm gonna say hip hop's eulogy was money, power, respect. No, I'm I'm backing up further than that. What <laughs> happened was that shit that shit burned bright like disco and then burned out and then because it got so popular, we took our shit the fuck back to the very very minimum the very very origin of those street fairs and those parks where it was just beat to rhyme yeah. and then run dmc came out and we took that shit and we made it ours it was a bunch of little mom well, I mean, and pop and we nothing. controlled that shit. it was ours it was ours we had control of it what's gonna have to happen i think at this point, it's that same thing. If we want to rise from the ashes, because it's going to burn out, and we're going to have to rise from the ashes again uh-huh. on that kind of level. Like, it's going to have to go back down to the sleeping bag records and the profile records and the fourth and byway records when it, that shit belongs to us again and not, not in think, somebody else's hands. I think for it to get better, it's going to need to be some kind of separation. I just said that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna need to be some kind of separation. I just said that in, in in my way, like it's gonna have to to burn out again. And I I have faith that it will because it's not like disco. I, it, that's it, my it, perspective. It but I don't think so. I don't. I I think it's only gonna get worse from here. Oh no. Yeah, it's only. I think it's only gonna get worse from here. But for the culture to survive, that I think there needs to be some kind of generally accepted separation between like the Kendrick Lamar's and the the I think it's gonna get worse before it gets better and I think that because the times that we're gonna live through it are going to change I think that that shit's gonna redefine itself because that's what happens with people they don't do shit because they they want to in general they do shit because they have to and hip-hop was born out of a have to so they right. have to rise right. again out of a have to not of a because Right. We want to. Right. There, there is going on now like a slow emergence of people who are tired of the bullshit, who are fed up with the bullshit. Yeah. A slow. It's very slow, but it's happening, and it's been happening for a little while now. It's bubbling beneath the surface. I think that it shows great promise that so many people have so much to say about these right. these, these bottom of the barrel people who are not who are calling themselves some sort of straddling I got one foot in one foot out of of rap right it's reaching the head it's reaching the head like not just 
quote unquote us haters are saying this shit. Every everybody's speaking up. You got hordes of people commenting on everything possible. Not just people who aren't who are in my generation either. Like people in you guys' generation. Like what is this shit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like, what is this fucked up it's shit happening I'm listening more and more. to? It's happening more and more. I'm the number of people who like that shit is growing too. That like what? That that doo doo that's on the radio. But you know what? I will almost like to say those people aren't people who actually like hip hop. And that's what I'm saying. There needs to be some kind of mass separation between that and what <laughs> hip hop is. You know what I think that's going to take, though. What? It's going to it's going to take it's going to take for um uh, uh artists to separate them separate themselves from um uh social media and the internet. Well, ironically, well, I think people are already doing that. Ironically, I think that that separation relies on one of those artists who fall under that category. Like maybe not a Uzi or a Yachty, but somebody no. in their camp. Somebody well, in their I mean, camp. Look at, look at people line. like Pants, like that he's not signed to anybody and he's right. not signing he, to he, anybody. He, he's a good example because I think he falls somewhat into that category as a Uzi or a mm-hmm. Yachty. Right. He's, so like, just a, he's like a good version of one of them. Exactly. So just imagine if somebody as influential as him was to say, you know what, you know, make That's the what I'm saying. Move, make the Prince movement say, I'm not, I don't want my shit streaming. I don't want, you know yep. what I'm saying? You got to come straight. You got to come straight from streaming. But like, that's a bit. It's a big deal that that's the only thing he's doing, and he's not. He's just a fucking independent. He's not signed. That to me is the new age equivalent of being with a fourth and Byway record. He he's an example of doing it the correct way. So I feel yeah. like somebody like him is going to be the one that makes that separation between what the the hip hop purists are looking for and what we're actually yep. being presented. Yep. Because I think he, somebody like, like him is going to be the one to make some, that. Yeah, it's got to be somebody that that everybody is looking to. Like somebody is gonna that everybody's saying is above. Way above par, cause right now above par ain't shit. Yeah, par above ain't par doesn't even mean anything at this nah, point. Nah, nah, par, yeah. par, par is negligible at best. <laughs> yeah, but that's what we, that's what we were talking it's about mad, earlier. You know, it's just, like it's not even mediocre. You know, everything, everything being nah. easily accessible. So if you, you know what I'm saying, if you somebody that's on that level, that make it so that you're not as easily accessible. You know what I'm saying? Whereas like you know yeah. it's. It's um. It, so you're it's saying more, it's got to be special again. It it right. has to be special. Yeah, yeah. it can't yeah. just be like, oh, that new um, that new common record, that new change record just came out. Oh, did you stream it yet? And then you listen to it, and it's like, oh, all right, you know, that's your own. But guy. I mean, been moving. Speaking on that point, I I feel like, and I hate to say this, I really do. Like I don't even want to say it now, but I feel like Kanye with the life of Pablo kind of started setting the standard for that. Because he put out he put out some shit. He put out some shit first. He put it out streaming. And the world and he, collectively exhales. Right. And then and then he went back and he edited and updated the shit. And he re-released it. Through the same oh, platform. Wow. Yeah, now, I know that. now you take that, you take that and you look at that and you you disregard that. You push that to the side, but then you look at KRS one. Who fucks up in who a major did way? That. Yeah, he did the same thing. I was, I was just saying that. Yeah, he did. So, 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 like Kanye is setting a trend now where music can be edited after the fact. Like you can get like DLC with video games with your music. Oh shit! Yeah, that's crazy. I, you know what? I don't. I don't know if I. I don't know if I like that shit. I don't know yeah. if I, I like it either. But it's I don't becoming like a new that. thing. I think that it's, it's, I like when 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 little life little idiosyncrasies and little things that you know that came out that made you laugh. That's what made things special. Right, right, and we're moving away from that. I, and again, I blame technology and how accessible everything is. Yeah, that's kind of fucked. Everything. Like 
And, and like now, because of, because of stuff like that, I'm waiting on an update to 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 uh, a, a lot of things. There's a couple of albums like Kendrick's Untitled Unmastered. He could put out an update to that now on Spotify or That's or cool. um, Title or whatever, and and still generate yeah. massive. Sells behind a project he already put out. Yeah, but that's yeah, that like shit remixing. Is, that shit is corny. That shit is like remixing, rebooting Star Wars. I don't want it. I didn't ask right, for it. I don't right. fucking need it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, put the shit out the way you meant to the first time, like Batman versus Superman. Put the shit out the way you want to the first time instead of milking us for the c- complete product after you give us a half done, a half ass Or let that project. shit the fuck lie. I don't have any problems with the practical effects that I see in Star Wars from 1980s. I so like that shit the way it is. Leave it alone. Leave them alone. Don't go back and update the original Jurassic Park. That Leave shit that shit the way it was. Like, Leave it alone. Let it lie. <laughs> let it lie. Leave it alone. <laughs> well, it's, it's, you know what? It's because in this generation now more so more than ever everybody got something and i hate to say this it's not all of y'all but i'm gonna you i'm gonna i'm gonna use my coin phrase again some of these malidiots <laughs> some of these malidiots that's all they that's do is sit the around tongue flapping about the way some shit looked like in 1980s this shit is what that shit was before you were born, you malidiot. It was before CGI. Yeah. You accept that shit. Learn to have some fucking taste. Sit and watch shit in its context. I would have never talked shit about shit from the 60s when I was listen, a kid. I listen. sat and watched that shit in awe. Like, that shit was still me- great. The Death Star scene from the original Star Wars is impressive yes. because of the fact that they use yes. miniature models instead of a computer. Yes. So if you go back and edit that out, you take away a lot of the effort and the creativity that went into the creation it of that just movie. It deads everything. All of it is just gone. It's gone. Okay. Yeah, it's like but yeah, up people, the don't, money people don't realize shot. that that's like, what you don't fuck up the money shot. You don't take the money shot out. <laughs> You don't digitally alter the money shot. <laughs> yeah, people don't people don't realize that that's what they're doing now, or either that or they don't care. So you got a lot of people that just don't care. They don't look at the art the way that it should be looked at. Because it, cause again, we're having this argument about art. They're not Fuck the art. of art. Fuck, Fuck the, the art. art. All Fuck I care about is the, all I care about is the commerce end of it. Because I'm, right. but that again, unfortunately, that shows you how low people are how common they've become they are not consuming at a high level either nobody's performing at a high level no one's consuming at a high level nobody's right which is which is kind of ironic considering like you know with the high level of technology we're working with (laughs) oh no it actually is not ironic aaron that's the way shit works that's the The nature of technology yes the higher you go the lower you drop that's the nature of yeah. technology. Technology yeah. does takes out a lot of the grunt work and a lot of the creativity. Yep. Technology uh, does the shit for you. So what y'all saying is we gotta get back to you know making it with our hands. Analog is the way to I go. I want to hear a beat on the fucking table and then spit. Analog right. is the way to go. Okay. Yeah. Fuck off, y'all. The, the drums the sound the boring. Like the drums sound boring. Yeah. That's why I've been I've been drifting more to classical music. As well, you should because, like, even when like I remember watching some some in Marcellus interviews where he was talking about Miles Davis talking about how a lot of this classical shit was like you know tired and bit and when Marcellus was like sorry, not Winton, um yeah Winton Winton was um like if you don't get the fuck out of here with that shit he was like you yeah. throw on that shit that them dudes was doing that shit was light years ahead of this and the, the, some of this fusion crap and some of this like the rock stuff you know rock yeah. and roll and, and even some of the jazz and they, and had, they had limited, limited technology. technology yeah yeah shameless plug I've been listening to Hector Bo- Berlia- Bo- Berlioz I don't know how to say it uh huh that's classical music I don't know if people yeah. ready for that Hector, no. Hector if they don't know what a fucking woodwind instrument is, I'm just saying. 
He said, I they did not know that that was a woodland instrument. <laughs> I feel like somebody on the side that was recording him even told him that a cello was a string instrument and that what he was talking about was a woodwind. I feel like little Yachty does not know a woodwind from a string from progression. That is not a phrase that little Yachty would know. No. No cool. Because there's no music there's no music in schools anymore. That's the other thing. There is We don't have music class. Save the the music, y'all. Shout out Save the music, y'all. Shout out Mr. Gaffin. Yay! (laughs) I remember him. Mr. Gaffin was was my music teacher. He was my music teacher. Shout out Mr. Gaffin. There's no there's no music class in school anymore. We don't got those well, posters I mean, in the even classroom. if there was, that's something you would have to start them out. You you, you can't have them jump in, jump into that shit like right in like in middle school, high school. You got to start them out appreciating elementary, that shit. elementary, and right when they're when they're fucking born. Let me tell you, <laughs> knock on wood. When I when I marry my um hip hop loving husband and we bear <laughs> a child. I will be purchasing those those hip hop books, and my kid will come out the womb with the the five elements of hip hop in their hand. Well, you supposed to you supposed to let your kid listen to Mozart or whatever. My kid's gonna listen to Illmatic and Rakim. Yep. I hope Maureen knows when she get pregnant. I'm gonna write uh, in my write in my tummy. I'm gonna put right on top. <laughs> I'm gonna put. It, it ain't hard to pool. tell. It's gonna be playing Painful. right in that mug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, raise a kid off hip hop. That's basically Aaron, what happened. Aaron, you actually have kids. Aaron, do you play? Do you make sure your kids get a hip hop education? Aaron's kids are funny, yo. They're hilarious. Ask them yeah. about the mural that was in the living room. <laughs> yeah, they, they listen to everything. <laughs> Ask them about the mural in the living room. His kids are artistic. Oh, that's cool. I'm sorry. Um, and I caught Forrest with it on your ass. You are not going to make me sit around thinking about you having sex with Hard to Earn. Wait, Hard to Earn is a very sexy album. <laughs> no, but you can't. I don't want to have to picture you having sex to it. Not to it, it but with no, it. No, not sex to it. Sex with it. Yes. No, I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to picture you trying to have sex with the Hard to Earn, or earn album. Hard to yeah, earn it sounds horrible either way. Hard it to earn is a voluptuous is a voluptuous Puerto Rican. Oh shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Anybody who loves hip hop, that's what you get when you listen to it. A voluptuous that Puerto Rican. That shit went family. left so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and you can't bring it back. Like you can't unsee that, you can't unhear it. Look, Everything listen. he just said is just if hard going to earn, now. If hard to earn, if hard to earn had a vagina, I would pork it. Yes, I would. Oh my god! There's a couple albums like that. Illmatic. I feel like horrible. that about some Don't things the like technique. Illmatic. Don't sweat the technique. I feel that way about Long Live the King. Look, if I had a band that could follow me around and play the theme song from Don't Sweat the Technique, like life would be so much better. Um, you do have a band. It's called Cool in the Gang. That's what a sample <laughs> No, I mean, like, literally follow me around and play the theme song. What Cool in the Gang can follow you around and see if you pay them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. If Hard to Earth had a vagina, I'd twerk it. I'd twerk it. Oh, gee, yeah. I do feel that way about some hip hop albums. I can't lie. Come but on. So, um, do we have. Do we have recess today? Cause that that, ladies and gentlemen, is second period. Yeah, we do. But hold on, I gotta fix my assistant cord. Recess. Technical technical difficulties, people. <laughs> yeah, technical difficulties. I got it. All right, recess today. I kind of want to tackle a little differently. Cause I'm determined. Oh fuck. I'm determined to have recess be like a reflection of up and coming artists. But I feel like today's episode, we can talk about some more established artists that have shown a consistent respect for the past. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm gonna need y'all help. But for the up and coming portion, I wanna talk about uh, my man DZ, DJ DZ for King. Shameless plug, Mm -hmm. shameless plug. You know, we got a feature on the I Am DJ DZ album. Mm -hmm. 
But DZ always been one of those artists who picks the samples and writes to an effect that he respects the past and artists that come before him. And he takes like the, re the whole regional thing into effect too, like like with the with the I Am DJ DZ album or whatever. It seemed like he focused with artists mainly from his immediate area. But his work in the past, he, he spread out a little more with that. Like, he got artists from all over the place working with him. That's cool. That is. Where's cool. he from? Where's he from? He, he from I want to say Ohio, Oklahoma. He from from one of them Easter states, but he lives in Florida like, right now. Yeah, like, uh, um, he's, he, he's from the Midwest somewhere. Or yeah. Oklahoma is not the Midwest; it's the West. I don't, I don't, I'm not good at geography. <laughs> Well, Ohio is the Midwest, Oklahoma is. He got a little bit of East Coast influence to his style. Cause he but you know what, though? Bars. Everybody, everybody back in the day had East Coast influence for their style because he dominated, so. That's true, and he, he a little bit older than us, so he a little bit old school with it. Um, what do you mean older than us? Me and Aaron, he older than me and Yeah, oh, thank uh, you for clarifying. Yeah, I am not yeah. your age. You're not our <laughs> age. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, the way the way he does it is dope. Like he got he constantly pay homage. Um, his sound is. Uh, he got bars and he, he's a consistent DJ. He comes through in the in the in the, in the clutch or whatever. So shouts to DJ DZ. And the I am DJ DZ album is dope itself. I like yeah, that Shameless plug again, we got a feature on that genre, but that's not why I like it. I like it because it's a cohesive, solid piece of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, like the genre, the genre with us on it, I'll go out on the limb and say that's probably one of my least favorite tracks on the album. Oh, well, see, there you go. Yeah, you yeah. underwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah, but the album as is, is, is a whole is dope. But... Given what the topic of today's episode, I feel like there's a lot of people who are out there now who've been doing it for a while that need to be acknowledged too. Yeah, it's definitely people that've been doing it for a while. Um, like uh, I don't know if I don't know if y'all listen to him. Uh, Ms. Ms. Mitch probably know uh, who I'm talking about. Uh, Jazz Liberators. Yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, like I like um, you know, like what they did with uh, those um two albums, the ones that I know of anyway. Where they like uh, trying to find the names of them. I, I heard the name Jazz Liberators before. Yeah. Yeah. Are they like feature and, artists? Um, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like a collective. I don't I don't know exactly like um who was responsible for all the production. Me either. But it's, like a, it's a collective of um different artists. It's like um the one John I was listening to had Trey Hardison from the Far Side on there. Nice. And, um, um, it's dope the way they do it. Like after every track. They like got somebody that either like do a poem talking about jazz, mm -hmm. uh, or they just had like some type of uh, dialogue talking about um, uh, bebop and all types of other black um, music that came before hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That made yeah. hip hop. That made hip hop what it is. Well, there's there's a lot of people, and we were talking earlier about about that. There's a lot of people consistent in the culture that do that but it's always the ones that you think would do it like Q-Tip yeah. or you know Talib and, I mean back in the day Kanye used to do it I don't know what the hell you're doing now but uh, <laughs> he's keeping up with the Kardashians he, oh shut the fuck up <laughs> Kanye Kardashian <laughs> He, he, look, we've all collectively pretty much just said Kanye is now in the sunken place. But anyway, um, like even Nas, like we talked about Nas last week, like you have a lot of MCs and people that, that pay homage to what came before them and are doing their part to keep and stay true to the culture. Like, this is where right. we got all this shit from. Like, like we went through phases and periods in hip hop. Like, it wasn't like, like there were phases and periods where we used disco. Right. To sample because disco, like right, right on the tail end, you had a lot of disco being sampled because that was 
the time period, you had a lot of some reggae being sampled because a lot of like who cool hurt influences because who cool hurt people came from the island. So, you know, a lot of hip hop was influenced by, you know, some of that. And then a lot of James Brown. And then you had us moving into like the electric, you know, time period right. where we started using Yellow Magic Orchestra. And every time, you know, we were using, you know, um, Oh my gosh, from the tip of my tongue. Uh, Craftwork. A lot. Uh-huh. Because we, cause we flipped everything up. But we, there are a lot of people who are, like, when people get pissed, when they hear, like, they'll hear Pharrell produce something. Pharrell is notorious for that. He understands this culture. He doesn't just vulture it. Right. right. He pays the he proper dues. He really does pay the proper dues, the proper homage. Like, when he did that, that um that comment album that nobody like for some reason nobody can get on to um that that song he did um oh my god what was it called you know what i'm talking about though the one where um he basically threw that shit back to like um africa bambada days oh um uh, universal uh, control yeah mm-hmm. bambada, bambada. So that's, that's all that was that that was them paying homage to that sound that electro funk sound that we used during that time that was beat but all it's all those, not beat but electric circuits all over again yeah and it's, it's those type of it's those type of nuances that um you know that put these people or you know these artists in high regard for most fans and i feel like um a lot of people nowadays they don't understand that they just feel like oh well you, you call this person a legend or you you got more respect for this artist than you do for that one because they've been in the game longer they don't care i don't right. care about um, i don't care about somebody's longevity if they haven't been you know um, dope yeah if they haven't <laughs> if they haven't been dope is a big part yeah and yeah you gotta be and, dope you know, for a long time not just be around for right. a long time exactly and just been you know being uh consistent with the quality yep that's why like okay so like that stupid little yachty song where he's singing it takes two play with that little like oh jesus no but like he actually went like threw this shit back to it takes two i'm like how does the how does the the less than mediocre now sample from the mediocre shit we were doing? Right. <laughs> like I don't understand this. Like Man, go much part. higher than that. Go that's much higher. Part. Like go higher than that, dude. Seriously, if you're gonna sample, hit the pinnacle. You know, not like the, like when like when not not the low bar shit. Like when you hear these rappers like Jay Z or. Um, Kanye borrowing these lines from other people. They borrow lines from, like, you know, what they just say, come get something, little bun. He's borrowing <laughs> shit from Big Daddy. A lot of people aren't aware of that, though. You know, he hit the Big Daddy level when he said, when they did that shit. I guess you could sample, you know, from some, from some shit that's low and, and then kind of flip it, but. You still gotta be the right kind of MC to do that, like, cause when um, I remember when when uh, Watch the Throne came out, and you know Kanye and and Jay, you know, did the whole Otis, and everybody was like, that came from Milk, and I was like, yes, it came from Audio too, and they heard the original song, and they was like, that song is whack, and I was like. <laughs> I mean, Audio 2 is an example of another party, you know, that was like a, like a, you know, like a more of a get hype song. They weren't like these outrageous lyricists. But that shit is still light years ahead of some shit that I'm hearing now. Right. Audio 2 made more sense than put Peekaboo. People people don't understand that, you know, that you can't just do something like, you know, like, and I keep trying to stress it, like, people feel like they can just do it because the last person did it or whatever the case. And you can't just, like, for example, The Roots. Like, people would say that The Roots changed the game by, you know, like, incorporating the live instrumentation sounds into... Right. Uh, they, did, they really didn't, though. Right. They, they, they sampled, they sampled, too. They, they, yeah, they, 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 they sampled. They def- well, yeah, they, they def- sampled, but you got to remember, in the early days of hip-hop, 
like back in the Sylvia Robinson days, mm-hmm. they they sat in those studios and they played those songs from beginning to end with live instruments. Right, right, yeah. And that's what so was it wasn't about. like yeah that like those were bands that they were that they were um, rhyming with in the you know in the Sugar Hill days like those those weren't. And they went on tour with bands. Like, they had live bands. So it's not right. like the Roots did it first. They yeah, did it but, again. <laughs> yeah, but they did it. They did it. Well, the point I'm trying to make with that is that they did it in a dope way where you can appreciate it. Where it's like... That's true. That that could have been... That could have went left. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, you know, like, somebody could have done the same thing or tried the same thing. And it could have come out, came out horrible. But right. you can look at that in a way that that they that they were paying homage as well like we threw this they shit were. all the they way back to were. the origin yeah they definitely were you had to be students yeah. of the craft in order to do that they even know that yeah yep right mm-hmm. if i don't know where i'm coming from where will i go i just i wish that there were more people and i hate always taking odds but i wish there were more but not as an example of somebody that has the ear of the street, but he still is able to do both. And I wish right. that we had somebody prevalent now that was really like that, that was really doing that. There's a couple people. That 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 have like his his um his level of notoriety too. I, I feel like Kendrick is building up to that. I mean, I would think that he's the only one I can point to to say that to. We don't need more than one. No, it's you. <laughs> we, need, we need way more than one. We we need I, at least one. We need at least one that this popcorn minute rice generation can hold on to. I need like 10 solid ones. There's, there's a bunch of people out there, but again, the popcorn minute rice generation is not going to consistently <clears throat> hold on to that. Right. I and think that if we force that shit, I think that you can make this shit turn. We could try. We could try, but the machine is pushing Kendrick. He's our best bet. Well, it's Kendrick not, and Cole. Cole, too. Cole's not getting as much push. He's not getting us, uh, as much push, but I would argue that Cole is is almost just as prevalent with not as much push. So that's something to be said for that. History history has shown us that there's not always room for more than a few. There's on, there's yeah, always like room. maybe two or three. Yep. It's gonna be about three that's at the top. It's, but it's always like that every era. But there's a couple of comers like you got Kendrick, you got Cole, Joyner Lucas is an upper comer. Yeah. Um, but these are people that these are people that's doing it. You know what I'm saying? They they doing the same thing, but they not. It's like it's like you know, uh, uh, we, we talk about you know I'm bringing up Lauren Hill again. It's like um with Lauren Hill, you know what I'm Miss saying? With Lauren Hill. With Miss. Oh my goodness! What the so, fuck is that about? <laughs> <laughs> but go Miss ahead, Lauren. go ahead. It's like, um, you know, when she was at the pinnacle of her career, you know what I'm saying? Like, at mm-hmm. that height, you know, like, she was she was touching both worlds. Like, you know, she was, like, you know, letting the mainstream know that this is what we do. You know what I'm saying? Wow, is Kendrick Lamar the new Lauren Hill? What? <laughs> no! <laughs> wow. You sure? Anyway, I don't think there's a to say that. You sure? Anyway. Are you sure? The point I'm trying to make here. Yeah, what that does that mean? Because of the Mars and New Lauren Hill. No, stop that. There were other, that- there were other artists, there <laughs> were other artists that were doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like right. you know, she was, she was the face of all of it. Like you know, you can't, you can't uh, push a bunch of artists on to people at once. You know what I'm saying? So Lauren mm-hmm. Hill was the face. Lauren Hill was the face for what the Roots were doing, what most well, was no, doing. Well, no, actually, you, you can do that, but you can't do it. In, like, back in our day, that's what we did. Day. It's but not it's, not our, yeah, it's not our day anymore. Yeah. That, But that's the problem. We did push. We pushed a whole bunch of MFers. 
at the same time. Exactly. But it, was just, <laughs> it was just a different. It was a. Di- but again, we were in control of that, and the world wasn't necessarily watching that. It was a niche at the yeah. time. It was. Yeah. It was a. You know, it was a niche market then. But like all niche markets, what happens is the people who make the money are still looking at you. They're seeing that you are able to eat off only selling two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like, like, sorry, two hundred and fifty thousand records. Right. They see you going gold. Then they see you hitting that because gold is a, is five hundred thousand. They're like, wait a minute, these MFers are going half platinum and that money's going in their pockets like when people mm-hmm. see that shit the, that fucking mob mentality kicks in for them and they're like we are supposed to have a piece of that oh the fuck you're not yeah that's what's going on but that's what always happens with everybody anybody who like the music industry it, and I hate to say this but for, for quality to return for us to get back to the level of art that we can truly celebrate and we could really get out to celebrate Black History um, Music Month. Sorry, Black Music Black Black Music Month. All these different ways of saying it. Um, <laughs> it like it. The music industry is almost gonna have to crash and burn. It's something. It's gonna take something major to flip, yeah. take trade change. I mean, it's on its last happen. leg right now, but it's like it's probably just gonna have to bottom all the way out. And God knows, I thought that that's what little Yachty was, but apparently, I'm still not mistaken. I'm still mistaken. If it goes lower than this, what do you all think that shit is gonna sound like? What does I less mean, than little Yachty sound like? It's gonna be a complete crash of. What's acceptable? Like shit's gonna be crazy for a second. But I feel like somebody's just gonna get on the radio and just say and just say one letter over and over again to a beat. L L L. Pootie Tang wasn't too far off from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> he got in the booth and dropped a silent album and just because his name was <laughs> right? so Yeah. Like the other day I was, I was like actually like like reading through comments somebody was talking about how um how like these new dudes are like the equivalent of yin yang twins like i was like even yin yang twins were more lyrical than this shit they have they have more bars than that yeah. shit is actually scary yeah is it like a is it like an art to get worse <laughs> it yeah. takes art it, it takes, takes some art type of skill to be this bad it got to take yeah. some level of skill to be this bad. And you got to be a certain level of bad to be popular and like that shit is an art form. I guess. That's an art form. But uh, but I guess that that's, that's part of what their argument would be. Like, oh, there's an art form to be in the terrible. Good and terrible. <laughs> that, boy good. Good. that boy Randy good. Watson. Randy Watson. That boy good. That boy good. Good and terrible. <laughs> Sex with chocolate. Sex with chocolate. Um, so unless you guys have do you guys have more um people you wanna you wanna pick up out there who like to appreciate the um the Hashtag, I the am, hashtag I am DJ DZ. Hashtag shameless plug. <laughs> hashtag buy this album. Buy it, <laughs> yo. Stream it, stream it. At the <laughs> Please listen to my demo. Stream it, stream Please it at listen the to my demo. <laughs> now, shout out to Styles. Please listen to my mixtape. Oh, why does Styles have to come up in every fucking time? Because I love Styles. I love, I love Styles, and I won't rest until you're convinced that you love Styles too. And I love biscuits, but how many times have you had me heard me mention that shit? If you want to talk about biscuits, we can go there. We can go there. Styles, is, Styles is the biscuit with your Sunday dinner. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like Styles is not the biscuit with my Sunday dinner. I feel like Styles is like the coleslaw. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, not the like maybe, maybe I can have some coleslaw with this dinner, but if I don't, it's not that big of a deal. I need can my biscuit be, though. Can you at least be the stuffer? No. What? Why? Can you at least be the stuffer? <laughs> no. Stuffing is, it, it, stuffing is integral to my meal as well. But you don't have to like it. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, you do. You fucking do, but you, you have to you like have to the like dressing. It. You, you gotta like the dressing. You got Bro, to. Stop. That's you where you my... put your gravy and you dip Look, your biscuit. You. Let me just tell you that the ghost. How does ghost... conversation get all foodie? The ghost, <laughs> because you use food as a metaphor. I know. Let's talk about the ghost. Let's talk about the ghost. The ghost. Yeah. You count him as somebody that like uh that like pays a lot of homage to like you know. I think Styles has a deep connection with the past. How so? He does. He acknowledges he acknowledges the pioneers. Styles can be quite conscious at times. I wanted to ask about that too for the conscious rapper list show. Uh, mm-mm. Styles can Styles be quite conscious. Styles being a conscious rapper. He's he's been on the forefront of the argument against technology for years. And okay, I'm, starting to, I'm starting to name I'm starting to name technology as the biggest culprit behind the decline in musical quality. Well, I said that it is, but it I'm, is, still not, I'm, talking, I'm not going to give about you it. conscious MC because of that. I'm sorry. He can be quite. Like, he can be quite conscious. He can be quite. His conscious. content has there is. Point me Look. to the song where he talks about his community, please. It's not just even do just that. Songs. It's not even just a song. So I was got to chain a, a, a juice bar. Oh lordy. Okay. In real life, in actual life, so, outside of the bar. So you know what? So let me just say this because for every pandering rapper, like Two Chains is quite intelligent. Two Chains that, is very intelligent. That yeah. that mfer is a is a straight pandering. I don't know what because he. He went to Georgia Tech, I believe. Like, he's extremely but, smart. But, and but, but, he also but. invests in his community, too. But I'm not giving it to him. I'm not giving it to Mr. Buy Back the Block, Maybach Music, <laughs> Ricky Rose either. <laughs> They're not conscious. That's all talk. That's all talk. No, he's actually put, doing that shit, but he's still not conscious. Styles, Styles put that shit in the play. So I'm telling you right now as we sit here and speak. Ricky Rose, Mr. Pushing it. He got a pair of arms. He got a pair of arms. Mr. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. I rhyme Noriega with Noriega. And I eat pears. I eat pears. And I eat pears. pears. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he is. He is. He is participating in buying back the block. He is doing it. All right, he man, really is. Good. However, however, it, if you were part of the contributor, um, contributor to ruining the block, Nino Brown. I don't think, I don't think. I'm not calling you conscious because you bought the block. I don't think Styles is ruining the block. I mean, I don't know if he's beautifying the block. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't using it. Styles, Styles. This is his first album at least. This is his first album at least has been on a consistent string where amongst the gangster talk, he got tracks about being a man, he got tracks about knowledge of self, he got tracks about giving back to the block, he got tracks about health and wellness. Okay, I, I need you okay, so when we talk about conscious rappers, um when we do our conscious rapper show, which is gonna be weeks and weeks from now, but when we do the conscious rapper show, we're I'm definitely earmarking this right now. I'm I'm yeah, he, I'm writing this moving, down. Yeah, I, can't even, I can't even I can't even engage in this argument and I, I like the He's at least but. he's at least he's at least moving in that direction. I'm gonna need you to point me to the consciousness of Style T, okay? Because I'm definitely not looking to South P for any, Look, any you know, elevate my mind and, and, and consciousness raising. Not listen saying that, that some of these dudes can't be full of shit because, I mean, I love most Def, I love Comet. I've yeah. heard them say and do some questionable shit. Right. Mm-hmm. right. You know, but overall, their message is conscious. Like, 
you know, but like most stuff has like a zillion kids. <laughs> I hope I, I know he's. I'm sure he's taking care of them. Yeah. Um, I hope so. but you know, like um, no, who else is like that? It's, it's, it's a bunch of these quote unquote conscious rappers Kyle that Keith. like have tons Over of children with like tons of different women. Like they're out there doing shit. Like not like they're just you know you know super conscious and they don't do I mean when people get power they you know and especially when you all get you know power when men get power we've discussed this before a lot it doesn't matter what kind of power it is a lot of what they want to do is just start inserting their penis into places that they shouldn't be I think that applies to prize that applies to prize when it's food yeah cause prize had consciousness at heart but he went up he went about it the wrong way. He don't know what the fuck he be talking about. <laughs> Prize, Prize, yeah, Prize like, started, what the facade? <laughs> he started building up the polygamous lifestyle and the crossbreed. Yeah, I heard off, about off that. I heard about that. Yeah, that, that deserves a whole Whitaker in itself. Prize is full of Pretty shit. Pretty much. I'm about to give you the Whitaker on that Prize. That deserves a whole Whitaker in itself. But Styles, over the course of Styles' career, he's become more and more conscious. So are you saying probably become it. less and less conscious? I'm not saying he's become less conscious. I'm just saying that the direction he's going or in like, is okay, like here's a good argument for that. So when we do get on it, like, like what about some like like outcast? Like you got one half straight consciousness, this, and then you got you know big boy who's somewhat conscious here and there, but it's mainly talking about sticking his dick in people's mouths pretty much every rhyme out. <laughs> I feel like Big Every Boy, rhyme, Big Boy, he does that. Every like rhyme. Big Boy, Big Boy talks more about his own experiences than he does anything else. He does tell you to set goals and, you know, turn diamonds um, from dusty coals. And, Sir Lucius left. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we, yeah, we're yeah, probably, we probably going to talk about this when we get into the actual conversation. We will. But, 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 yeah, like, it's, it's a fine line. Like, I think uh, the... the idea of conscious rapper is misconstrued a lot. I do too. It is. Okay, it is. Okay, okay. But I count I count I count styles because that's the ongoing theme in his music. It's like the system and the way things are set up. Yeah, we might have to look at that one I think. Uh, yeah, I'll see top five better on So um so homework for next week. Um we're gonna be discussing the history of jazz and funk music. So, please, you know, mildly acquaint yourself with jazz music and funk music. I recommend uh, Miles Davis Solia. That's a good one. Sketches, sketches of Spain. Sketches of Spain is always good. I, I love, I love I sketches. would encourage anyone to to start with the origins of jazz, like the big band, you know, like Salone. Louis Armstrong. And then I like work to your way to up. The outcast. Listen to what? The, to the outcast. Like Thelonious was 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 like side side eyed when he was popular. Yeah, when like he was popular. To, I like to listen to the to the outcast to the, to the genre. Another I mean, like uh, another But another, they're not um, outcast anymore, that's the only thing. Right, exactly. That's why I like to listen to them because, like, when they first was out, when they were prevalent, they were they were largely fought against. Pain. But nowadays, yeah, they nowadays they regarded as as pioneers. Yep, that happens though. Yeah, hindsight is twenty twenty. So the same thing that happens in hip hop happens in every genre. Right, right. And of course, I love my. Funk music is probably my actual favorite form of music next to hip hop and then jazz. So we're gonna have to talk about Ben Bada at some point. Uh, did, wow. did you say Ben Bada? We're gonna have to at some point. I mean we're gonna talk I mean, about he got nothing to do with jazz and funk though. I mean, but, 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 I mean during the history the of hip hop, yeah, when we get to the history yeah. of hip hop part. Yeah. Yeah, and it's But that's a whole style. Month of shows. We're doing a whole that's month of shows of that. Yeah, Bambada, man, Bambada. I don't want to talk. Of, well, we're not going to talk about that part of Bambada. 
We have to. No, we don't. Listeners, we can't assume that the listeners know what's going on. We're going to talk about the the pioneering portions of it. Yeah. I don't know how the other parts are relevant. They will be. No. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I no. guarantee it. I guarantee so, it. So, back to funk. <laughs> right. <laughs> back to funk music. Like, part of what's important to, to talk about jazz and funk music is because hip-hop has most of its origins in a lot of funk uh-huh. and jazz music. I think right. it goes further than that. Like with well, the I'm plays, just saying that because the, the basis of, of, of what we did... Well, I mean, we want to go that back that far, but I'm just saying, like, literally... Most of the stuff we borrowed, yeah. and most of the stuff you, you hear, like in the samples of the eighties, is where yeah, it is, and the nineties. But the spirit, that the spirit stuff comes spirit. from jazz and funk and soul records. We're not talking I think, about. The spirit, I think that that spirit. I think that that spirit is prevalent in the early, the early origins of what hip hop is. It is, but again, we're gonna, you know, we'll touch on that, but the literal. Like product that that came out of the old school and the golden era was the product of the funk music, those funk True. music samples that we saw. True. True, but still, you know, Wade in the Water. Wade in the Water was a was like an early freestyle. I always Fine. get when people say stuff like that. But for, but, but, for that, but for the stuff that we that we're talking about you know for that that we do and mm-hmm. we touch on it, like I you know we'll talk about stuff like that but we're talking more the literal origins at this point no nah. that's still it's still gotta be in knowledge I'm not, not saying we want to acknowledge it yeah, but not in that yeah. particular conversation. Yeah, yeah. But we'll like we talking about jazz and funk, you know. Uh, rest in peace, George Duke. Um, oh, I love George Duke. Yeah, I fuck with George Dookie Duke. Dookie Sick. Dookie Sick was yeah. one of my favorite songs yeah. ever. <laughs> <laughs> I and, love um, funk music, but like, but like, literally, without funk music, hip hop as we knew it would would never exist. That's true. That's true. It would all sound like our future. Anyway. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much the show. Um, <laughs> cause we're cause we're boiling down uh to our time here, and so just you know acquaint yourself with the jazz and funk. Definitely hit up that um stuff that Anthony was talking about, and you know was bringing up um lady blah sketches of Spain. I would definitely look at the loneliest. Look album. at some look at some Charles Mingus. Charles Mingus is my freaking favorite. You know, check up on some Art Blakey. Some, um, some Jimmy Some Leslie Jimmy Smith. Some Dex- Dexter Gordon. Dexter Gordon. Listen to a little bit of Freddie Hubbard. Like really get in there and get your hands dirty. Get and your hands dirty. The roots definitely count. Well the roots are just like say like a Q-tip is like they yeah. dig down in the crates and that's and when, when they pull shit up that's what they pull. That's more relatable to the current generation as a group. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they know the roots because of television now. They that's don't even know the roots. They don't. They do not know the roots. The roots is obscure to these kids these days. They know the roots because they see him. Because um, they see them as a backing band on television. Yeah, yeah. That shit fucks my mind up. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I think, like, did y'all used to ever see the Roots when they used to be on the like? I think you guys are too young to see too. To remember, they haven't seen them play on the sidewalks. I have been to Philly and seen them play on the sidewalks back in. The I day. read about it. I read about it. But I read about it, and the big part of what made them popular at the time was the fact that they were doing covers, and nobody seen the covers done with a live band. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, they were able to do a lot of crazy 
a lot his, of crazy his things. Accuracy was freestyle. His accuracy was freestyle. Is what drew a lot of people into the roots. He he's one of the most underrated MCs. Back throw top five that are alive. He really is. He, he's, he's the only person. He's a monster. That I won't argue about like Black Five. The, Black Thought the, the deserves to be there regardless of who your top five is. Black Thought deserves to be there. And see, Black Thought's not in my top five. He's in my top ten, though. He deserves to be in your top five. No, he's a biscuit. No, he's not a biscuit. He's he is a biscuit. A biscuit. He's, he's a biscuit. No, he's not coleslaw. He is dinner. a biscuit. He's a biscuit. He's the whole soul food Sunday dinner. He, he, <laughs> he's, he's not my soul food. Homeless and collard greens no. and macaroni and cheese and no, all that. No, he's not the whole... Hey, wait a minute. I think that's what I'm having for dinner. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's all these damn food metaphors. That's our show. Is <laughs> Thanks for tuning in with us. And school is officially out. No hall pass necessary. Go back to class, children. <laughs> All right.